Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be so exciting because we are going to be talking about my top 22 books of 2022. Oh, big baby. There you go. Dog Vincent is joining us today. Can you guys see him? Okay. Anyways, we are going to be talking about the top 22 books of this year for me. Um, I'm actually interested because I do have a lot of series in here. I counted all the series as one except for another series. I counted it as two separate books. I don't know why I did that. I think because I haven't read the full series. So we'll just say that's the reason. But I do have about 22 if you want to count the series over 22 books for you guys to put on your TBR for 2023. I have my coffee here and I have my sweater vest on, so we are feeling very good today. These are in no particular order. I just wrote them all down while I was going through my five stars on Storygraph. If you guys don't use Storygraph, I would 100% recommend it. I love it. Um, get it for the new year. I'm converting all my friends to start using Storygraph. I love Goodreads. Goodreads is Goodreads is just like where everyone's gonna be at, but Storygraph has a lot more features and it's owned by two black women, I'm pretty sure. I could be in incorrect on that, but it's a small owned black business and I just wanna support that. So you guys should go like add me on Storygraph, go download Storygraph for the new year. Um, but yeah, I just went on their feature where you can sort through your five star books and these are the 22 books that I picked from that. So this is in no particular order. We're just going to grab and go. Um, and then I'll look at my phone for the ones that I don't physically own at the end. The first two I have are actually the two that are a part of the series, but I counted separate. And that is The Bromance Book Club and then A Very Merry Romance. So this is the first book and this is the fifth book. I have not read two, three, or four in this series yet, um, which is kind of perfect because I can tell you guys you don't have to read them in order. Obviously, you're going to see couples that are together that get together in the books between these in this last book. But pick this up before Christmas. I rated it five stars. Like I said, all of these are five star ratings. And I thought it was so cute. You get a famous star, famous like country rock star with a girl to so get a girl that's a lawyer for immigration law and just see their relationship. And it's so cute and I love it. I love it. I love it. This one is like a sports romance, but the guy is trying to win back the girl. All of these books, at least from the two that I've read, are about the guy trying to get back the girl or trying to get the girl. It's I, I just love it. I love it because I think that's not traditionally what we see. We usually see like the girl pining after the guy or like the girl being the first one interested. Whereas these, we're seeing more of a male focused point of view and I really appreciate it. I also think it's very interesting because this author, it's obviously book club related and the author writes the book within this. So not only do we get the story between the two main characters. We also get to see like the actual like fictional book a few chapters and I think it's super exciting because the author is going to be releasing the first book that they read which is called like Courting the Countess or something like that. She's actually publishing it. So I think that's super fun. It's super fun and anyways I would definitely recommend these. I'm going to be reading two, three, and four very shortly and also these books are just so cute. You can't tell me they aren't. Come on. Come on, I love it. On, we actually have a classic, and I think this is super fun because you brought in your horizons, but I have Persuasion by Jane Austen. It was my first time reading this classic from her. I've actually always loved Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. If you would have asked me, that would have been my favorite classic literature romance novel, but I think this one may top it. And I'm like, every new Jane Austen book I read, I feel like it's just gonna keep on getting better and better because I love her as an author. But I read this because we had the new Dakota Johnson movie coming out. And although the movie wasn't what I expected, I did really enjoy the movie. It was comical. The book was amazing. I mean, we get to see a second chance romance and I just loved it. I thought it was everything that I wanted in like the classic OG second chance romance. Second chance romance is one of my favorites. So this one was very, very good for me. And next we have The Simple Wild. You can also include the entire series because I rated the entire series five stars. But The Simple Wild, the first three books follow Calla Fletcher as she goes to Alaska and tries to form a bond with her, um, her estranged father, I would say. I don't know if they're completely estranged, but maybe say they're strange but they kind of are and she meets this bush flight person named Jonah and it's the romance between them and it's about this girl that is from Canada 
like falling for someone in Alaska and I, I it was everything I wanted I feel like this would actually be a perfect winter book so add this on your winter TBR I read it during the summer which was also a great time to read it um, but I feel like it would especially hit hard in the winter so yeah this entire series was amazing I just brought out the first book because yeah, next we have Sally Rooney's Conversation with Friends. This is actually my favorite Sally Rooney book. I read all of the Sally Rooney books besides Normal People this year, and this one's my favorite, I, can't, I don't know. And that's kind of crazy because this was actually her first novel, and I think that's insane, but this book was exceptional. I still have not watched the show, so please encourage me to watch the show. For some reason, I always tend to rewatch things and not watch new things. So help me out and encourage me to read this. But yeah, this was super good. Um, her literature is very interesting because it's not, it's all like character driven or not even, like there's no plot. It's just two, two characters or more vibing out, talking about life, trying to figure it out. And I loved it. I love, I love this one. I don't know what it was about it, but something about this one in particular, I just, I was obsessed with and I think it was maybe because I related to Francis a little bit. I'm not exactly sure but as you can see I have this one tabbed up and I have annotations all throughout it. Um, but yeah just a fantastic book. Now read this one. Read any Sally Rooney. She was like probably one of my favorite authors of 2022 so pick this up if you want to. I really want to get the conversation with friends script because I think if I had that it would also encourage me to watch the show. So that's that's that. I have Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Of course this is going to be on my top 22 because this book was gold. Emily, Emily Henry is one of my favorite authors. She's on my favorite author shelf that's like right here. So is Sally Rooney right there. But anyways, this book was amazing. It was one of the best books I read of 2022, which is why it's in this video. Um, it discussed like, it was first off it was like Grumpy x Grumpy, which I really enjoyed. I feel like I've probably seen that done before, but when I read it, I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen this before. And I really enjoyed it. I loved that they were a part of the book industry. I loved reading about that. And Charlie was just like the ultimate book boyfriend. Like you can't tell me he wasn't. And I just loved it so much. I will say this book doesn't beat Beach Read for me personally, but it is very good. And I'm really excited for Happy Place coming out in April. I think that one will be even more good she just keeps on getting better and better honestly says a total delight and that is exactly what this was i would 100 percent recommend this i feel like it's more of a spring summer read so pick this up in that time and you will love it it has like some small town vibes to it and yeah i would recommend it the thing about emily henry is she always adds like a bigger a bigger issue like you get a life lesson and you kind of see a family relationships throughout this like a big sister relationship and I also think that's why I really liked it as a big sister um, to two younger sisters and a younger brother I think the relationship between Nora and her younger sister is very relatable to a lot of older sisters so yeah if that sounds interesting you should definitely pick this one up I read I think almost every single Colleen Hoover book in the past like year and year or two this year I think I completed like if you pulled up a sheet of hers I think I have every X off except for two books which she co-wrote with Taryn Fisher I believe um so because of that I read a lot of her books and I can safely say that my favorite that I read this year was Reminders of Him I thought this book was incredible honestly um it I think it made me cry maybe not actually made me cry but near near tears and I think this is genuinely one of Colleen Hoover's best best pieces of work um I would 100% recommend it I think everyone should read it give her a chance and start with this one because I think it deals with some really good just I don't know it talks about loss and parental relationship with their daughter um I don't know I thought it was amazing and and like there's a quote that's like I know there was a before you and a during you I never thought there was an a there would be an after you and I'm just like oh my gosh I loved Kenna I did not like the daughter's name if you know you know if you were to read any Colleen Hoover book I would probably recommend this one even over it ends with us I think um so that is my take on this book next we have Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna this is my first Kristen Hanna novel which after reading this i'm like i want to read more i want to read the nightingale i want to read the second book to firefly lane which i think is like called fly away or something like 
The book is called Fly Away and I want to watch it or I want to read it. Also, there's a series and I want to watch the show too. But this discusses, this is more of like a fiction book, historical fiction, I think is Kristen Hanna's genre. And of course there's some romance in here, which was very, very fun. But the main story is about two relationships between two women as they grow up and kind of how they navigate their friendship along with their own personal lives. And I thought that was very interesting. Um, it also deals with like grief in here. Um, I thought this book was fantastic. Like again, I don't usually cry when I read books, but this one like almost brought me to tears. It was so good. And yeah, like I would 100% recommend this. I'm gonna say that for all of these books, obviously, cause I love them all, but especially this one, it was very good. It might look intimidating, but it was so good. And I'm so grateful that I read it this year. So we have a Greek mythology book and that is Circe by Madeline Miller. A Song of Achilles was written fantastic and it got so popular but I don't know why people don't talk about Cersei because I would argue I like Cersei even more than the Song of Achilles and maybe that's because it focuses on like women regaining their strength like empowering women and stuff like that um but this book was fantastic Madeline Miller is like truly an incredible author her writing is beautiful she makes you understand like really dense subjects such as Greek mythology. She makes you understand it within like 400 pages or so. Um, and I think that's incredible. And I'm so excited to see what else Madeline Miller does. I know she's writing another book, but I'm forgetting what it's called now. Um, but yeah, this is fantastic. I have a reading vlog for this book of how I annotated it, if you wanna watch that on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, I love this one so much. It's beautiful, Madeline Miller. I will continue buying all of her pieces of literature um, because it's fantastic. I, I think, I'm pretty sure she's writing a Persephone and Hades retelling, which Persephone and Hades is my favorite story from Greek mythology. I don't know what it is about them, but I love it, so I'm I'm very excited for this. This one we have is The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver. This is again a book that I didn't cry to, but I almost did because it was just so beautiful. It reminded me of Taylor Jenkins Reid, um, the One True Loves book kind of trope, and I just thought it was beautiful. I also really appreciated that it was set in London, or not London, but it was set in the UK. And I just, something about books that are English, like I just, I'm obsessed with it. And yeah, I just really appreciated this love story. You get two love stories almost, and you have this woman who's having to decide what to do with her life. It's a life lesson about love and how to appreciate the love that comes into your life. And yeah, I thought it was beautiful. Again, beautiful. Also the cover, gorgeous. This pink is so pretty and I love it. Josie Silver is a great English author. Gosh, look at these, look at these vibes of these two books. Okay, well the next one we have is A No Show by Beth O'Leary. I loved this book. I don't know, I randomly picked this one up at Barnes & Noble because it had like the 50% off sale after I had read The Flat Share with, um, by the same author. And I really enjoyed The Flat Share, but this one was so good. And my friend Grace actually just read this book. She just texted me this morning saying she finished it. And I loved it. I thought the plot twist was gorgeous. I loved all the characters. And I don't know, I would 100% recommend this. I did not see the plot twist coming. Pick it up. Also, the vibes of these are so good. <laughs> it's so good. And Beth O'Leary is another English author. I don't know if I said that, but pick this one. Next one we have is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I really enjoyed this book. Rated it five stars. I don't know why why I'm saying that. Of course you know. Book Club, this one is again, it is contemporary romance and it's very contemporary. I feel like there was a lot of mentions of like social media and things like that, which made me feel like more current. I think it was set in 2019. But the thing about this book is it again deals with other topics, just it, not just the romance. Like we deal with two black authors talking about that. You also talk about like gang violence a little bit in here, which I think is very important to talk about. And just, I think there's some mention of like drug abuse and things like that. And this one is very interesting because you get to see them when they're younger and then when they're older. It's kind of like a second chance romance in that aspect. But yeah, of course, recommend this one. Put it on your June TBR, like perfect time. Try to read it in seven days in June. I am so funny, can't, can't you tell? We are narrowing down my last physical book. So the next series I have is actually the Cruel Prince series. I think this was my third time reading it. So I don't know, I think I've reread it for the past three years or maybe just the two, two, 
2021 and then 2022 but in 2021 i read it twice i'm pretty sure there's something about this series that i love so much and i'm so excited because holly black is actually releasing like a spin-off series with one of the characters in here as they're older and i just i love cardin and jude so much i actually have the king of elfame how the king of elfame learned to learn how to hate stories or whatever that book is called but it's still on my bookshelf i didn't grab it and i also do read the lost sisters that's in between these two books but I love this. I would 100% recommend it. I think anybody trying to get into fantasy, I would start with this because this is a fantasy novel series. It's like it's fantasy based, but there's a subplot of romance and I I just loved it. I loved it so much. It was so good. And of course, it's going to be on my top 22 because like I said, it's literally my third time reading it. This big boy, I am so excited to say I read this series. I read Akatar for the first time in 2021 and that's another series that I've read multiple times and so I was like you know what I need to start reading her other books. I had this on my shelf and so this summer I read the Throne of Glass series. This series is humongous, so many pages but it was so good. Oh my gosh, I rated all of the books five stars. If I had to pick my favorite, it would either be Empire of Storms or Kingdom of Ash, but to read those, you have to read the entire series. So obviously I'm gonna recommend the entire thing. But yeah, this series, like, I'm not even gonna lie, like part of me liked this more than Akatar. And I know that's controversial opinions. This one is young adult, whereas Court of Thorn and Roses isn't, and you get more scenes than that. Something about this series was just so good i love selena and aelin i love them so much and yeah i don't know this is so good i i like want to reread this but then i'm like no i need to read the crescent city first before i start rereading throne of glass or akatar so yeah if if you're wanting to get into fantasy this is again another great start okay now we can talk about oh we can talk about the books that i don't physically own i either read on libby or i borrowed them and so i do have a few and the first one I have is I'm Glad My Mom Died. This is a memoir, obviously. It is written by Jeanette McCurdy. This has taken the world by storm. I'm pretty sure it won Goodreads Best Memoir Nonfiction section, um, but I actually listened to this on audiobook using Libby, which that's another app that you guys should download. It is a great resource if you have a library card to get free books. Um, but anyways, I'm Glad My Mom Died was just fantastic. I will say lots of trigger warnings towards like eating disorders and of course, parental abuse and things like that. It's a book that I'm so glad I read and will probably continue reading in the future. I would really like to own a physical copy because that's a book that I want to like lend out to people because it was fantastic. The next one I have is Archer's Voice and oh my gosh this book was amazing. I don't want to pick my favorite fiction book but I think if I had to this one would be like a contender because Archer's Voice is so good. I actually reread it this past fall or I didn't finish it but I would reread every once in a while. There's something about Archer Hale that I am just obsessed with. Like if I had a book boyfriend I think Archer Hale would be the one that I would want. Like actually I'm serious guys read Archer's Voice, read it. I want to read Travis which is the it's like a companion novel. I really should read that but yeah, oh my gosh. I can't even explain how much I love Archer's Voice. A lot of booktubers love it. So if you don't want to listen to me, listen to them and read it. Okay, the next one we have is Redeeming Love. This book is a romance. It's actually a retelling of the book of um, Hosea in the Bible. And even if you're not a Christian, I would 100% recommend it because it just shows you like redemption. And I mean, it's literally in the name Redeeming Love. Um, and yeah, I think even if you're not a Christian, it's a good read, good romance of like true, like true love. And it's fantastic. And as a Christian, it shows just how like willing Christ is to forgive you and redeem you no matter where you come from or who you're with or how you've been growing up, as long as you're willing to change and accept Christ, like he'll be there. And I think that's so encouraging. And I think it's one of my favorite like religious type of books. Um, and the movie, again, I love that movie. I need like a, a whole bunch of people watch it. I think I've watched it probably seven or six times, something like that, crazy, um, but super, super good. I think the last few books is actually the Addicted to You series. I did this one separately because I've only read Addicted to You, Ricochet, um, Addicted for Now, Kiss the Sky, and then Hot House Flowers. So I've only read the first five. I'm pretty sure there's five other ones. So I still need to read those. So please encourage me to finish that series. I don't know what it was, just something stopped me from reading it. Not sure what, because that series 
that series is so good i'm a lilo fan so hard also rose and connor i don't know what their name is Ronner? is it Ronner? i don't know they're cute i i feel like i really i feel like i really associate with rose like a lot <laughs> um if you can't tell i'm currently working from home but anyways um yeah addicted the first five books were so good i really love connor and rose i love daisy and reich i love all of them it's the core six is so good and i really want to finish the series in 2023 because then i want to start reading the spin-off series i don't actually know what it's called but i know it's about their children and i'm just like i want to read all that i want to read it so bad but anyways that is like all of the books i know that's over 22 books um, because of the series and things like that, but those are all books I would 100% recommend you guys read in 2023 or you could try to crank out in the last like week of the year if you wanted to. That is intense though, but anyways, that is going to be the end of the video and yeah, I will talk to you guys very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite book of 2022 was and I will talk to you very soon. Peace and love. Bye guys.